Hi everybody, welcome to A Historian Knits, a knitting podcast here on YouTube. And my name is Vanessa, I am based out of Cincinnati, Ohio, and I live here with my husband, our daughter, and our dog. And this is mostly a knitting podcast. Uh, there'll be some crafting here and there occasionally, but it's mostly knitting. So places you could find me, I am A Historian Knits on Instagram and Ravelry. We also have a Ravelry group. A Historian Knits podcast group. There you'll find the show notes and any other information regarding the podcast. You also find the show notes down at the bottom um, in the drop bar with all of the information on it as well. I'll have all the links to the patterns and if there's any other makers and things like that, I'll have the links to them as well. So let's go ahead and get started. I know it's only gonna it's only been like two days since I've podcasted because I had a kind of a little mini episode about sweaters. A couple of days ago, so we're gonna go ahead and get started with the FOs. So my first FO, as you'll see, I am wearing it at the moment. This has been on my needles for several months now, um, and I finally was able to finish it, so I am wearing it. I'm sure as soon as I show it to you, I will be taking it off because it's still pretty warm here in southwestern Ohio. So, what is this? This is the Genesis, Genesis Wrap by Lauren Slagle, and uh, she's the maker behind Lolo Did It. Um, this has been on the needles for quite some time. I was hoping to get into the um, knit along that she had going on, and I just didn't make it. It was ending at the end of July, so obviously I just got this done, so was not able to enter that in there. But basically, um, the, per the whole idea behind it is you're supposed to use minis, but there's some people that had used... Um, just solid colors, and that's what I decided to do because I had gotten this skein, this kind of blue, bluish skein with speckles as uh, a mystery um, yarn club, I think, for the month of March. It's called Under Pressure, and I had no idea what it was going to look like. So I ended up getting the, the coordinating um, color with it, which is this orange Blazing Sevens, and these are all Lolo Did It yarns. And so I decided to make a wrap out of it. Why not? Since I couldn't figure out anything else to do with it. They're not really my colors. I'm not really a big orange person, but I really like how they, they work together. And I think it's kind of a fun, fun wrap with all the speckles and there's red and blue speckles in here as well. Um, so I'm going to take it off so I can show it to you a little bit better. It's kind of an interesting shawl. It has long tails, which I've never made a shawl that has long tails. So this is going to be interesting in trying to figure out how to wear it. Let me take it off and show it to you. So basically, I'll show you where it starts. Started here, and then grew, and grew, and grew. So I wanted to use up as much of under pressure as possible. I basically uh, was only left with about six grams, and I wanted to put uh, a square in my cozy memory blanket. So uh, this is what it looks like with basically all of the under pressure color in there and it's pretty pretty big as you can see. Um, I will show, I will enter a picture, insert a picture here uh, when I kind of laid it out on the floor and took a picture of it. I'll put a picture here so you can kind of see how big it is. And I have yet to take proper pictures of it to put on my Ravelry page, but it is done! And I'm so excited. I blocked it, washed it, um, so now it could be put away for the fall when it actually gets a little bit cooler outside. And I believe she just had some of this in stock in her in her shop, the Under Pressure, and her Blazing Sevens is uh, one of her tonals, so it's always in, seems to be always in the shop. But I think I will be using... Um, it has a, a really easy recipe for increasing uh, on every, because every row it increases. So it has a really interesting recipe that I could use for other shawls. I could make other shawls of just a, a single color. And I think that's what I'm planning on doing for one of the Christmas gifts that I'm making. I'm just going to make one skein shawl and just use the, the same recipe just to um, make it. And I loved it. And it was, it was really nice to work with, and I loved, obviously, the striping. It was great. So there's my first one. Um, my second one, actually, 
I should just show you these all together. Um, I made some dishcloths, as I said I was going to do last week, so I was able to enter these into the washcloth along, I keep calling them dishcloth, same thing, the washcloth along um, that uh, Lydia Brown from O Loops is hosting on her podcast, which is Fiber by Design. So on her, uh, and this ended August 15th, so um, it's a little late to get that in there. So the first one, I'll show you these two together. These are, the pattern is Grandma's, Grandma's Favorite by uh, Vintage is the name of the maker. And um, these are very simple, very quick. This is the free pattern on Ravelry. So it's very quick. I mean, you just kind of increase to get to 44 inch, 44 inches, not 44 inches, that would be huge, uh, 44 stitches. And um, when you get to 44 stitches, you start decreasing and then that just kind of gives you this little square. So this is um, dish, uh, Dishy, Nip Picks Dishy in the aquarium colorway. There's that one. And these have been washed and blocked and ready to put away um, for future gift giving. Um, and this is actually a new acquisition. Um, this is Omega. I've never heard of Omega. Um, see if I can tag up. Omega Symphonia. There's a half. This is what it looks like. And these are the needles, the half eaten. I don't know if you can see that. Half eaten. My dog got to these half eaten needles. I can still use them though. And this is what I have left of the frambuesa, I think it's called. I think it's raspberry in Spanish. So there's that. It's really pretty. And um, this is actually a sport weight. Uh, the pattern, I think, calls for a worsted. So these were worsted. The dish, this sheet was worsted. So I decided just to hold this double, which actually came, came out a lot thicker than I anticipated. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm going to do that next time or if I'm just going to leave it at the, the sport wait and see kind of how big it gets but it came out the same size as the worsted um so there's the this is held double it's kind of fun so there's that and then the last one i have ah, there's i had this one in the needles last time and this is the marguerite uh one of the patterns that lydia brown i'm just kind of washing it out a little bit see if you can see it there it is, that's a little bit better. It's the same aquarium colorway, the dishy. So there's that. So these are all going kind of in my, my gift giving pile. So those are all of my finished objects. I do have some half finished objects, some hose. Um, why do I always smile when I say that? Uh, it's just ridiculous. I'm like a 12 year old child. Anyway, um, one of my hose is on my new acquisition which are these fabulous sock blockers, metal sock blockers. I have plastic ones that you've seen before, and it picks plastic ones and I almost dropped the one. Um, so these are my new sock blockers that I just got at my local yarn shop. And you saw this one last week as well. Here is one of my Christmas socks. I'm gonna show you a little bit there. And this little stitch marker, the Christmas light stitch marker. That's where you saw it last. So I was able to finish the foot and put the toe in. Uh, the main color is Bad, Wood, Bad Wolf Girl Studios in the little Christmas tree colorway. And it's in a Stellina and I love her bases. They're just so incredibly soft. Um, then we also have the uh, Knit Picks Levo's Tonal in the heart felt. That's the toes, heels, cuffs. And I just basically did a stockinette vanilla sock. Um, I haven't blocked this yet. I'm kind of keeping it around until I finish the other sock. I'm going to block them together. So I did a 2x2 two two rib here in the cuff, uh, 20 rows of it. Then I did about 40 rows. I don't like really long socks, so I did 40 rows to the, the heel. And this is a fish lips kiss heel. Um, and then I did the foot. And then I did the um, kind of a wedge toe here for the toe. So there's my first half finished object. And then since I'm already talking about these, I might as well show you where I am in the next sock. So again, this is in my 
Darn Yarn NN bag that I just love so much. I'm gonna have to get more of her bags. Um, I'm kind of waiting to see if she gets any. I haven't seen lately, but Halloween, and we'll talk about Halloween in a minute. Um, but, so I got the cuff done on this. This is the right side here. My cuff is done. I started on the leg, so that's where I am. And I'm doing these out of um, US ones in Chiagus. I believe these are the red lace ones. Um, super pointy. Stabbed myself a couple of times already. Kind of have this like permanent, yeah, <laughs> this permanent spot there. I guess it's just the way that I knit. It is what it is. It only happens with sock uh, needles. <laughs> They're just too pointy. <laughs> and I got some new acquisitions, so I'm hoping to, to kind of test those out and see if they're as effective as my chavus. But anyway, there's that. That's what I got for that particular sock. My next half uh, object is obviously another sock. And this is in my kind of homemade Wonder Woman bag. Yay. And this one was for, these are supposed to be Christmas socks. I don't think that's gonna happen. Um, for those of you who know me well, I don't like surprises. I don't like to wait. So, and, and I got that from my mom because she never liked to wait and would always give us our Christmas presents way ahead of time. So, um, I think I'm gonna make these a back to school sock. Um, hopefully have them done. Amelia starts back to school September 5th, so I have a couple of weeks to get the second pair done. But look at this, guys. Like, what? Look at that. Look at the spiral. How fun is this? I had no idea this is how it was going to knit up. And she wanted the strawberry field sock pattern after she saw mine. Um, so there's that. You can see they're kind of like strawberry seeds and I totally messed up, I think somewhere around here. Um, but she doesn't care. Um, she probably wouldn't even notice. So I think this is where I was last time. And then I finished the foot and the toe. And seriously, I, I just can't get over how like fun this is pulling here. So this is, um, oh, and the pattern was by Amber Crawley. And it was a free pattern on Ravelry. So there's that. And these were done in, um, again, more Chiago's US ones. Let me show you the the yarn and where I am on the second sock and I'll talk about the yarn in a minute. So I'm like, I haven't even gotten the cuff done yet. So there's really nothing to show there. But here's the yarn and excuse the hot mess of a cake I have here. But the yarn, for those of you who are interested, is, um, and I've talked about this one numerous times and hopefully next time will be the last time since hopefully they'll be done. This is um, Alegria, um, Manos de Uruguay in the color Candombe, and I'll put that on here. And it's a 75-25, as you see there. So there is, isn't that fun? Like that is so fun. Like it's just such a great sock, and she loves them. I think I'm gonna have to make a future socks for her a little bit bigger. I did a, um, I guess I should mention that, I did a 52 inch, she wears a size, a US youth one, I believe. She's just getting into ones. She's either between a 13 and a one. Um, so I did a 52 stitch sock. I do my socks 64 inches. Um, so I think I'm gonna have to do a little bit, add a couple more inches for the next sock. I know these are gonna stretch a little bit when I wash them and block them. But still, um, I probably should start making bigger socks for her so they last her longer. So that is it for um, half finished objects and finished objects. So next we're going to talk about what's on my needles currently. So let's go to works in progress. Since we're on the subject of socks anyway, let's go ahead and talk about my August socks. Um, I am doing these two at a time concurrently, so on two different needles, and I have been using them out of the same ball, which now I have learned is a complete disaster and I will never do it again. Um, 
because it just it's a huge tangled mess. I usually divide the ball, divide the skein into two 50 gram balls. And this time I just decided instead of having all of these extra balls after I'm done finished knitting, I could just have one, but now it's it's a huge disaster. So I'm not doing that again. Um, learned my lesson, try something new, didn't work. So I'm gonna go back to my old ways. And this is just in my homemade project bag that I made. Um, this is my first one that I've ever made, so has a lot of memories to it. And my friend Kristen has a matching one um, in different colors, but same patterns. So it's kind of, uh, and then our friend Melissa helped us make it. So hi, Melissa. Um, so that's always fun. Has memories attached to it. So this is Beach Life by a yarn well spun. And I'm not sure if she's dyeing yarn anymore. I saw her stuff. It's under another name. I believe it's called Rhapsody in Hue. Um, I don't think she's dyeing under a yarn well spun anymore. I'm not really sure. Um, the website's still up, so if you're interested, you could go there. Um, but you can get more information on her website, and I'll link that in the show notes. So I'm trying to figure out how to show you these without... These are my Addy uh, Rockets, Turbo Rockets. And even though they're not as... I'll kind of show you there. They're not as pointy as the Shiagos. They're still pointy. They still <laughs> damage the finger. So here we go. This is where I am. Uh, last time you saw them, they were uh, below. I hadn't put the heel in yet. So they're on the foot, basically. And seriously, you guys, look at these socks. <sighs> they're just so beautiful. I mean, look at the back. Seriously. Like, I don't even know. I just can't wait for them to be done. But at the same time, I really enjoy working on them and they're just so pretty and they'll definitely be done by August 31st. I'm hoping to take these, probably take these on vacation if I don't get them done before then. So kind of at the same point. Yay! Um, what else do I want to say about these socks? Oh, I should probably tell you the pattern. So I told you the, the yarn is a yarn well spun in the beach life colorway. These are the Central Park Socks by Mina Phillip and um, they're in her New York City collection. So there we go and um, it just worked out perfectly because I usually put my socks in to several different knit-alongs. Um, uh, of course there's the Boxo Socks which is um, Yarngasm and that's you have to have 12 socks for yourself in a box for the year. And then there's um, the Crazy Sock Lady. She does the Crazy Sock Cow, I believe, or Sock Crazy Cow. Um, and then there's also the Grocery Girls, who um, they, also, they do the, the monthly sock bash. And the month of August was actually lace. So you get an extra entry if you did lace. And it just so happened that Mina's sock pattern for August was lace. So it worked out perfectly. I, I was able to do... And, and also Mina does a knit along for all of her patterns all year long. So it's like I could enter it in several different uh, knit alongs, but oh, it's just so beautiful. Like it's just so pretty. It just makes me so happy. It just like reminds me. I mean, just she nailed it in terms of capturing the kind of beach life. Okay, now I gotta see what I mean. Now I gotta put these back somehow without tangling them up. So what I've been doing is kind of, this one's kind of coming from the middle. And this one's coming from the outside. Yeah, I won't do this again. It's a disaster. So we'll just put this away. Um, trying to think if there's anything else that I want to say about that. Looking through my notes a little bit. Nope, I think that's good. So the next work in progress, this you saw last week as well. This is my Toe Pond, um, a, a paid pattern by Pam Allen. And sure have it all here so it's actually looking like a tank top guys sort of the bottom part of the hand tank top so this is the front you can see it kind of goes up a little bit in the front than it does in the back I love how this yarn is knitting up 
I'll show you the yarn in a minute. But first, I will show you, you can see where the little narwhal is right there. It's a little narwhal by um, Sugar Tots on Etsy. And that's where I was last time I podcasted and showed you guys this thing. What? Look at this. It's like inches. Inches of work. Lots of inches. So I think I have like two more inches to go before I, I basically separate for the sleeves. So I am almost there. I almost have a garment. Isn't that exciting? I'm excited. Um, and these are my chiagus. This is in a size US 10, which is a 6.0 millimeters. But seriously, isn't that gorgeous? I cannot wait till this is done. So the yarn is, well this is what's left of my second skein of yarn. Um, I do have a third one. It's the Pima Splash by Mirasol in the color number, or shade, number 102. So there's that. Kind of getting down to the bottom of this. And this is in my bumpkins. Bumpkins bag that I got on Amazon. But I am so happy with the progress that I've made on this thing. I just want it to be done. And um, in retrospect, I probably should have done something about alternating skeins because you could kind of tell where my second skein started. I mean, I don't care, but you can still tell. You can kind of tell up here is a little bit more speckly than the bottom, and that's where I started the second skein. But it's fine. I really don't care. I will just be happy when it's actually done. Um, this is one of the projects I started many months ago and I just wanted to be done. So there's that. And my last project I started um, knitting on again. And this is one of the ones that is kind of a long lasting project and that's okay. Because I, this is a kind of thing that I take with me. Oh wait, I have one more project. But then back to this one. Um, and this is something I take with me where I go and it's just an easy in the round knit. And this is on a quilt knit craft bag. It's kind of a little camper theme there. And this was the first maker I ever bought from on Etsy um, in terms of project bags. So it's really fun. She makes great stuff. And this is my, um, I'm affectionately calling my accordion scarf, making up my own pattern as I go. And um, so this is what I have so far. Don't look at that side. Uh, you kind of see my jumps on the back side, which is something I'm working on actually. And so this scarf kind of gives me that opportunity to work on trying to figure out jumps between stripes. So here we go. This is 100% um, cashmere. So I kind of treated myself and it is incredibly soft. Uh, it came as a kit. This is the Lux Adorna kit in the colorway, I don't know if you can see that, Urbanite. So it does have several different balls of yarn here in different colors. Um, I'm gonna hold it up there. Ah, I don't wanna get them all out and get them all tangled. But it came with a pattern. I just didn't really like the pattern. Um, I kind of wanted to try something different. So basically I'm using, I'm kind of, as you can see here, I'm making up my own pattern as I go along. I ran out of the light gray, so now I'm using a black instead and kind of going between this kind of grayish black into like a more solid black. So basically what I did here um, was 10 rows, eight rows, six rows, four rows, two rows, and then kind of went back up. And I did this the opposite with the other color, two rows, four rows, six rows, eight rows, 10 rows, and then I kind of went back down. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm just gonna go with it. And again, this will be a long project that I'll just keep working on whenever I go. And this is just the, the cast on. This will come off at the end. This is not part of the scarf, but it's in a big tube as you see here. And so far I am, I'm loving it. It's super soft. And it's just something to play with that's fun and it is what it is. Something I don't have to think about too much. And the last thing I wanted to show you 
I said I wanted to make some house slippers for a Christmas present and I had it barely cast on last time you saw it. I was hoping to have one done by this point, but I don't. This, this is a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, these are the Simple House Slippers by Simone A. And the color is Rainier Heather in the Cascade 220. And I'm almost to the toe, as you see here. Almost to the toe. And of course, at the end, this has to be sewn together to make a slipper. But I'm almost there. And again, these are Christmas presents, so I have plenty of time. Although I wanted to get them entered into the uh, Bad Wolf Girl Knits. Uh, Bad Wolf Girl Sits and Knits podcast uh, Christmas in July cow. She's extended to the end of August, so I want to kind of enter these in there as well. So I think I'll be able to get them done before the end of August. So there's that. Well, I think that's everything for works in progress. So let's talk a little bit about acquisitions. I have a special assistant today for acquisitions, Hi. my daughter Amelia. Hi. And we're going to talk a little bit about, um, we're going to kind of go through some of the acquisitions we uh, purchased, well I purchased, <laughs> during the I-75 yarn crawl. And this is just a portion of them. Um, we talked a little bit earlier in the week about sweater quantities and then we're going to talk probably next time on more of the acquisitions. I went a little crazy, honestly. Um, but I'm kind of, and we'll talk about that in etc. I'm a little yarned out um, from all of the, sh the shopping we did last week. So let's talk a little bit about some of these yarns. So this is one of my favorites. Um, this is Misty Alpaca. Let's see here. And this is 50% um, alpaca, 30% merino wool, 10% silk, and 10% nylon. Um, look at those colors. Oh, yeah, this light is like not even giving it. I mean, they're much brighter in person. Oh, and there's dog hair. Just a kind of dog hair. Um, I thought I was originally going to make socks out of these, but I feel like this is too pretty to make socks out of. Um, and this is color number HS56. Um, so there you go. Can not find? So I'm not really sure what exactly I'm going to do with this, but it's, it's so beautiful. <laughs> it's so soft and so beautiful. Like, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. And it looks like they somewhat stripe for socks anyway. I just don't know if, this is just so soft. I don't know if I want to use it for socks. All right. So let's talk about some other ones. There's two of these. Can you grab me another one? So I bought these on clearance. I saw um, Amy from the Stranded Podcast. She is making some kind of evergreen. I believe it's the name of the pattern. I gotta double check that. And she's making some, basically some Christmas tree socks out of this really rich dark green. And I saw these and I'm like, and again, color is not doing it justice. There we go. It's a little bit closer. Just have them as eyes here. <laughs> and these were each at five dollars each. Um, they're they are a hundred percent wool, uh, merino wool, which is not ideal for socks. But since they're going to be holiday socks, they're not going to get that much use out of them every year. So I think they'll be okay. And it's very kind of a. I don't know if you see this. It's very kind of stretchy. Um, very soft. Fifty gram balls, and the yarn is one I've never heard of before. Milamia. It's funny because it says Sweden on there, but then the tag says made in Italy. So I'm not really sure. <laughs> I'm not really sure where exactly it's from. Um, but it is beautiful green color that I was looking for. And this is in the colorway Moss. And again, light is not doing it justice, but it's like a dark evergreen color. Okay, let's go on to some um, more sock yarns. So this is uh, West Yorkshire Spinners, and this is 75% um, wool, 25% nylon in the Passion Fruit colorway from England. For those of you who are unfamiliar with this yarn, it's a um, 
It's usually a BFL, yeah. Blue Face Lester. It's about 20, 35%. So look at that. I love these colors. It was between this and um, kind of a brighter summery one. And I just decided to go with this one because it's closer to like fall colors. So there's that. Okay, so let's go for another one. And this is an opal that I got at one of the urine shops. And again, currently I'm going with the fall theme. Um, I'm not sure what this one is called. There's a tag over it. But the color number is 5520. And apparently this one is discontinued. I looked for it online and I couldn't find it. Um, Fiend and Elfin is how I'm going with that. Um, but it's so beautiful. Very fall colors. And this is what it's supposed to look like when you knit it up. So, another sock yarn. Okay, um, and then let's do this one. This one was just another Regia. This is, I'm um, planning to use this for, um, like, toes and heels. And it actually looks really orange on camera. It's actually not orange. Really? I mean, it's like a reddish orange. Oh, that really looks... Why does that look so orange? Let's see if they compare it. No, that didn't help. It's just like glowing orange. It's actually reddish. <laughs> it's like a kind of a tomato red. So I'm not really sure. <laughs> why it's so... Maybe closer over here. Nope. Nope. Still orange. Okay. Well, it's red. Gotta take our word for it, I guess. Um, it's color 05962. And again kind of sturdy um, and it has a little acrylic in it definitely for heels and the last thing I wanted to show you today um, this new maker that I came across on Instagram which is like the worst enabler ever um, she is a new dyer that from what I gather and she has the most beautiful colorways she's based out of Arizona and um, here's her the cutest little card this little card. There are yarns on it. They are yarns on it, right? I think they're her, they're her yarns. So she has she also has a podcast. I didn't know that. I should check that out. Um, but here is all of her information. And it's fuzzy cactus yarn. And I bought some. I have to have it back there. I haven't uh, knitted with it yet, but I bought some actually. Hold up, let me get it. Might as well show you all of her yarn at once. So, the first things that I ordered from, um, I believe her name is Katie, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Katie Ross. The first things that I ordered from her, she posts these on Instagram, and I'm like, I need to have them immediately. Um, this is Unicorn, Rainbow Unicorn Tail. And it's a 75-25, so 75 merino, 25 nylon, 25% nylon. Like, seriously, guys, look at these neons. I don't even know if the camera picks it up very well. But that's, that's gorgeous. Seriously. Instagram is bad. <laughs> and then she also had this little kit. This little, like, Starbucks It looks like kit. chocolate chips. It does. And then um, it has a little mini with it. So it has a little mini, and it had a little, came with a whole little set. How cute is that, guys? Again, my light is getting blown out. But it's like a little coffee mug, a little Starbucks coffee mug. I mean, these are like dead-on Starbucks colors, which I have an obsession with. Um, so I bought this from her, and then after she was having like a summer sale or something, and so I purchased... This, which feels like summertime, is what it's called, and that's my favorite season of all time. Is summer favorite holiday is Halloween, which we'll get to, but definitely like so gorgeous. I mean, it has these pops of color. There we go. Look at that. So pretty. And then I ended up buying, um, I bought this little charm because Lemon, oh, where's this guy? There he is. 
Lemon gummy worms are the best. I love all lemon flavored things. So there's that. And then I bought this one. This is going to be a gift. Um, this is Monsoon Sunset. So look at these purples. That look pretty. Super pretty. I think this is going to be for your piano teacher. I think I'm going to make her a, uh, a shawl of some kind. Because she's a really big fan of purple. Yeah. She's always wearing purple. But check her out. It's Fuzzy Cactus Yarn and she's on Etsy. There we go. So she has some great stuff. She does some great colorways and they're very beautiful. And she has some, um, I believe she has some Halloween stuff out now too, which of course is my favorite holiday. Um, so go ahead and check her out. Let's go right into etc. All right, so a couple of things we wanted to talk about today. Uh, we went to the I-75 yarn crawl last week, and do you know how many stores we went to? No, like a million. She thinks, thinks it's like a million. Um, it was a lot. We went to 17 different stores, and um, that is just within less than a two-hour radius from our house. There are 17 different yarn stores. We're very fortunate. Um, and it just opened my eyes to so many places that carry yarns that I've been looking for that I didn't even know were so close to us. Um, like Hedgehog Fibers and Sweet Georgia Yarns, like a lot of the stuff that I love. Um, now I know where to find them, uh, if I remember that. I mean, there were so many that I kind of lost track. And I think next year I'm going to make better notes of what store has what so I could kind of go back to those stores because it was a little overwhelming. And even at the end of it, we were just like... There's too much yarn. And I never thought I would be able to say that, but there was a lot of yarn. Actually, I'm I'm not yarned out because I didn't get any yarn. No. Uh, I, I feel like a little yarned out. <laughs> uh, after seeing, you know, 17 stores filled with yarn, it was a little much. <laughs> um, but of course, now I'm appreciating all of the things that I bought. And you'll be seeing more of those next podcast as well. So that was that. Uh, we had a really good time. Um, we're going on vacation next week, and we're going to be traveling to the ocean, the beach, um, and it's rather a long drive from where we live in Ohio, um, so I'm taking lots of projects, I'm taking all of those projects, as well as um, books. Let me show you some of the books that I'm taking with me. So, since I just finished my dissertation, haven't had a whole lot of time to read for fun, and it's kind of been putting me off um, that I associate reading with work. So I'm trying to break away from that a little bit. And so I'm taking these books that have been sitting in my pile forever and ever and ever. Um, so one of them being Catcher in the Rye. I've always wanted to read it. I've never read it. We'll read it hopefully on vacation. Uh, another one, The Secret History of Wonder Woman. Another one that I've been really wanting to read. And then my husband got me this for my birthday. One of my dreams is to go on Route 66 all the way to California, like drive. It starts in Chicago, which is about a six hour drive from here. And it goes all the way to California. So I think we're going to be doing that next year, maybe, hopefully. So this is kind of gives you a bunch of information on the stops along the way. Um, so that's a fun thing to kind of glance through and see what the, the route has to offer. So those are just a few of the books that I'm taking with me for fun reading. Um, I guess I kind of forgot about future projects. So I'll kind of stick those in this section as well. And I am going to talk about two different ones that I hope to have on the needles next time. And again, we'll talk about this in a second. <laughs> Go back to the idea of, of Christmas knitting. So I want to knit my husband, and this is another bag from Quilt Knit Craft on Etsy. And I want to knit my husband some socks for Christmas. Um, because he's just, he just deserves some socks. Some hand knit socks. And so I have this in my stash. And um, there it is. Shoffle, I guess you would say it. 
DOS par, which means that there's like you can make two identical pairs, and that's how it's um, skeined up as well. And this is the color. I'm never going to be able to say that. Azure hook. It's right right there. So there's the colorway, and I think this would be perfect for him. He likes blues and greens. Um, his favorite color is red, but I didn't really have any like red sock in my sash. And so he said he would like these. So there we go. So those are some socks that I hope to take with me, possibly, because he has really large feet, um, either US 11s or 12s. So they're going to take a while for me to actually get them done. Um, and then the next one, so I made this bag myself, halloween -y bag. I bought the fabric at like Joann's and here's some kitties on the inside. Um, so I'm still debating on what my contrasting color will be for this yarn. But you guys saw this one on the first episode. This is the This is Halloween colorway in uh, Nomadic Yarns. So basically red, or red, orange and black. So I just have to decide which of these I'm going to go with as a contrasting color. I haven't decided yet. I like that purple. Really? See, yeah. now we got three different people because my husband liked this purple and then Mila wants that purple and then I, I like the green. So I don't know yet. I think I'm just going to do like an afterthought heel. So maybe I'll just do like big tubes and then just put in a heel at the end once I figure out which heel that's going to be. So those are my future projects and hopefully I'll have the other socks done by that point and I can show you how I'm doing on these. Um, but I think... That is it for now. Um, what about the Christmas? Yeah, we just talked about that one. That was uh, my dad. Dad sucks. So I think that's it for now. And we will see you next time. See you in a couple of weeks. Bye.